Hi, welcome back to Castle Dangerous. Thanks so much for joining me here. Today I am working on unraveling what was a placemat and I am using it instead of braided straw that's for making hats or baskets. And I have this idea that I can make myself a woven hat using the, uh, well, I found out that the name of it is Fun Wheat and it is 100% polypropylene. It says here, hand wash only, do not bleach, do not tumble dry, do not iron. Oh, well, I already tried ironing it and it works out fine, but I guess most people don't iron their placemats. Do not dry clean. I don't know why you dry clean it. It's, it's plastic. It's dinosaur wool. It has been harvested from oil and it has been woven into this fine and fabulous material, which is very flexible. It's a lot like the um, straw that I used to buy bundles of by the yard or by the meter, depending upon where I was getting it from. Then I started having trouble hmm, a few years ago having a consistent supply. So I would take old straw hats, some of them that I'd made, and ravel them and remake them into a new hat just call me Lydia Wickham for all of my hat making remodeling. So here I'm going to show you how to unravel one of these placemats. When you first unravel it, it's going to be very coily, but you can iron it out so that it is really nice and smooth and flat. Okay, so, so I just popped the end thread and I'm just uncoiling it. These are not super sturdy things. I'm gonna go to time-lapse to save time in my life and yours too. Well, that went fast. I have unraveled my placemat and the first bundle is all wound up. The center of the placemat is much more coily. So I may not have to iron the outside portion of the circle, but this inside part to make it usable unless I'm making a round thing. And I have made uh, bonnets or I uh, made a, a straw top hat and that was coiled in a round fashion and stitched. And this would be great for doing something like that. Uh, I would need a form for building, you know, a shaped hat. It, it's, you can, you can stitch it together to make shapes. It's just a whole lot easier to put it on a form. So this stuff is just not going to be useful until it gets pressed. And as it said on that tag that was on it, you know, do not iron. Well, you know, don't stick an iron on it and leave it on it. I have a hot steam gravity feed iron and it has a protective silicone shoe on the iron itself. So it doesn't stick to things and things don't stick to it. And I don't think I've ever melted anything with it, but I wouldn't want to just leave an iron sitting on this stuff because once again, it is plastic, but it is polypropylene, which is a uh, thermally resistant plastic. So it's used for a lot of food serving and microwave safe things. Not that I'm going to microwave anything in my hat. This is my material. And uh, it does come in other, it comes in lots of colors, every color of the rainbow. I've gotten some black ones a while back with the intention of making myself a Regency bonnet. That hasn't come about yet, but it will. And then I found one in a thrift store in this lovely red color, which is a little dustier than the orangey red that a great deal of my Regency wardrobe seems to be. I wonder if I should uncoil this, or I wonder if this is going to just end up being like a bonnet. I could end up making this into the brim of a bonnet. And then build that back cap part out of another or out of fabric. Wow. 
I just feel like I'm going to suddenly I feel like Mary with my glasses on. I'm going to possibly disrespect Darcy and Wickham by snapping my book that I'm reading shut. Snap. These look like really fun materials to me to weave with. I am going to enjoy playing with this new material, the fun straw, as opposed to the organic straw that I've always made hats out of previously. I need first to make myself a base to weave around and I'm not going to carve it out of foam. I think I'm just going to make something out of cardboard and weave around that. Let's see what shape I can come up with. Hi, I'm back. I went and recycled some cardboard and I tried to start out with that bonnet shape that I was talking about for Regency, little sort of pillboxy cap and then the big brim. And yeah, it was just really unsatisfying and I wasn't coming up with the right angles and I didn't like it. So then I thought, okay, fine. I really want to weave a hat. How about I, how about I come up with a different shape and I must have Halloween on the brain because what I came up with was it's either a princess hat or maybe a witch hat or now that I put it on my head, I'm like, it looks like a gnome. Do gnomes wear black hats? Maybe I should ravel the red one and make a little gnome hat. Oh, I can put like fur around it and but I've already got the black unraveled, so maybe it's a witch hat. So <laughs> when you're weaving basketry, the parts of it that you're weaving through are called stakes. And I'm going to put just a few on here. So there'll be pairs, except there'll be one because it needs to be uneven for weaving around. So let's get started with um, the weaving. I have my stakes pinned on to start weaving. One, two, three, four, five six, seven. I thought I was going to start with five, but it was a little sparse up at the top, so it's going to be seven. And then when I get down to about here, about here, I'm probably going to have to start adding more stakes into it. I'm going to get the weaving started, and then you can join me when I get just a little bit. It's really clumsy to start with. It's the same way that you start a cornucopia. I've got the tip started. It's a few rows down. I've already had to add a couple more stakes. You just add a pair by folding them in half and you can poke them up underneath. If you want to, you can fold it over the weaver row above. It's really not important how they join in this particular hat. It's not a fine art hat, so I don't have to worry about it hiding every single join. And I kind of want that organic shape, sort of like possibly a roof from the Weasley's house from Harry Potter. So I'm going to continue on and see what the organic shape is. I might dampen the cardboard a little bit to add a little more sort of bend and tilt to it. And it really is fun. I'm really enjoying how it's going together. All the ends are woven into the tip and now I'm ready to baste it to the brim.
finished construction of the tip to the brim and added a grosgrain ribbon band to finish the interior. With some scraps of the fun wheat braid and leftover material from another project, I've made an embellishment for my hat. Thanks so much for joining me here at Castle Dangerous. See you next time.